Good morning. God bless you. I'm Bishop Eric Butler, and I'm coming to you from the Sanctuary of the Joy of Life Ministries, Faith Ministries in Omaha, Nebraska. And I wanted to come to you with an encouraging word this morning. Now, scripture lesson is coming from Romans chapter 8, where in the first verse it says, There is there now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. And it says there further in Romans chapter 8 at the 14th verse that those who are led by the Spirit of God for are the sons of God. For we did not receive a spirit that made us a slave to fear, but we received the spirit of sonship. I want to talk to you today a little bit about this thought, our Father, our Father. Jesus, when he told his disciples how to pray, he said, after this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I find in the day and time like this, we need to be reminded who we are and whose we are. The world would have us to think that we are not who we are. We are not here appropriately. We have no rights being here. We are hopeless and helpless being here. We are even illegally here, as we call some of immigrants illegal aliens. It's interesting that if you look in the Bible and you look at the term my father versus our father, Though the term my father is used in the Bible in many cases by people referring to their natural biological fathers, the only time the term my father is used in terms of God in heaven is when Jesus himself, the only begotten son of God, referred to his father as my father. If you look at all the other references in the Bible, the references surround our Father. And I find today when there's such separation and division that is going on and seemingly exploding exponentially, it's important for us to come back to this notion of our Father. Sometimes those in different religions, the Muslims might proclaim that they have access to the one and only true God. Jewish people might say, unless you're a convert to Judaism, you cannot call or have access to God the Father. Some Catholics may say, unless you're a convert or born to Catholicism, and accept the Pope's word as infallible revelation, you cannot say, God our Father. I would even say we Pentecostals, and yes, even we here in the grand old Church of God in Christ might believe in our hearts, even if we don't verbalize it, that we are the only real children of God. But at a time like this, when seemingly we are being separated in every way you can imagine, by race, by sex, by socioeconomic class, by political party, by religion, by ethnicity, even now we are being separated by state. People in Florida don't want people in Louisiana to come in. People in Texas don't want the folks from New Orleans to come over. People in Rhode Island don't want the folks from New York to come over. Even in a day like this, where we're being separated every way you can imagine, it's important to understand there is someone who connects us more than anything that divides us. Our scripture text in Romans, if you read Romans chapter 8 and go further and read Romans chapter 9, it's Paul doing some deliberate reasoning and discourse to convince the Jews that they did not have exclusive possession of God as the Father, and that being Jewish did not make one a child of God, and that he had to assure the Gentiles they had full access to God as the Father. There was only one solution and strategy for everyone to be part, become part of the family. That says there in verse 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Whether you're man, woman, child, we all have sonship rights if we are led by the Spirit of God. So as children, we can expect things from our Father. We expect support, protection, direction, education, inspiration, correction. 
we readily accept to be obedient to our Father because we are part of the family. So I'm here to let you know today, it doesn't matter where you come from, what background you have, what biological family tree you come from, what part of the country you come from, what part of the world you come from, what your eyes look like, how much melon you have in your skin, what the color of your hair is, whether you've been to prison or what experiences you've had in your life, we have access to God called our Father. That's why when Jesus said, when you pray, our Father, it is a prayer we all should know, we all should pray. And every time we pray this prayer, the Lord's Prayer, it should bind us together. Because he's not just the father of the U.S. He's not just the father of a part of our society. But when we pray, we acknowledge unity under our Savior, our Father. In a time where people in one state are trying to keep out people from another state and people in one country are trying to keep out people from another country, it is good to remember it is our Father in heaven that is above all, through all, and can be in us all. Let us pray. Now, God, we thank you again for allowing us to share these moments. And God, we thank you that you are our Father, you are the Father of everyone that joins within your family. So today, God, we pray that you forgive us of our sins and wash us and lead us to join your family. And wherever we come from, whatever the background, whatever creed, color, ethnicity, uh, background, socioeconomic status, country, state we come from, we are part of the family of God. So bind us together in the spirit of peace and the spirit of unity. And we pray these things in your name. Amen. Thank you for joining us. And remember again, God is still God and he's still in control.